Are we live? All right, we should be live. We are just waiting for people to come into the stream, but everything should be live and good to go here. Uh, we're going to be streaming some more Index gameplay today. Uh, we're starting with Ian inside the headset this time. Hello, and everyone. You should also, well, like last time, be able to hear us both. Uh, this is David talking. My face is the one in front of the computer. And say hello, Ian. Hello, everyone. That's him behind me there. You can see his first-person view of the controllers as well using the pass-through camera on the Index headset. And he is inside hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades at the moment. Hello, Grayson. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Xian Kuhn. Uh, we are just starting the stream right now, um, so we're gonna he's, we're gonna let Ian play around in some hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades for the moment. Some H3, and uh, then we're gonna switch around to some other stuff, and we might trade off the headset here and there. Uh, hey, what's up, Joe Raiden? Thank you for joining. And I do believe what I heard through the grapevine of Discord is that Blade and Sorcery is getting its index update today as in within the hour that should be coming out. So if that happens as we expect it to, then I will be definitely streaming some of that with index support. Um, that is going to be fantastic. Um, that, that, yeah, I'm just very excited for that game to get index support. <coughs> uh, so we have a question already. Uh, Joe Raiden wants to know, in your opinion, Ian, how much better is the resolution on the index compared to the regular Vive? The regular Vive. I wouldn't want to go back to the regular Vive. You wouldn't want to go back? Would not want to go back. Okay. It's the simplest and, uh, way I would put it. Um, do you have uh, it'd any... Be a little, it'd be a little bit more complicated with the Vive Pro. Um, uh-huh. You, you, you joked yesterday the, the expense uh, being worth it right up front. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's such a hard thing. Um, resolution isn't the way I would... I would categorize like the the visual uh, quality here. I would I would characterize it all about um, comfort, and if you value comfort and want to spend more time in VR, uh, this is the best uh, best visual comfort experience that I've been able to experience. Uh, TK uh, the index if you get. Uh, just the headset. Uh, the headset, I believe, is 500. Is that right? That um, that's for just right. the headset. But you also you need the tracking base stations up here in the corners of the room. Um, if you don't have those, you would need to buy um, those with the headset. And if you don't have controllers, you need the index controllers. And the whole package is a $1,000. Um, and yes, you do need a, a powerful gaming computer as well. Uh, to run the index TK. It is not a standalone headset like the Quest. Um, you do need a powerful gaming PC for that. <coughs> so this is very much a high-end um, headset designed for, you know, premium users, I would say, is a, is a good way to describe it. Um, let me see. I don't know if the chat is showing up on the stream itself. It looks like it's it's not popping up. I don't know if that's what the issue with that is. Should be popping up. Uh, maybe. Oh, you know what? I think it's. Is it? Uh, I don't know. For some reason, chat's not popping up on the screen, but that's not that's not a huge deal. You just won't be able to see the chat. Um, let me do video capture. There we go. Chat box. I yeah, do it slow there so people can see how the interactions That's work weird. in H3 VR. Um, Joe Raiden um, says, based on the early info that we have, how do you think the Valve Index will stack up against the Vive or the HTC Cosmos? Ooh, Cosmos. The only the closest we've gotten to trying Cosmos was it was shown on a stand at CS in January, and really it's hard to yeah, make any possible. Yeah, we weren't even allowed possible. to touch it, huh? I, I tried to take a 3D scan of it with my phone, and some of the reflectivity on it messed up my 3D scan. And uh, that's as close as we've gotten to actually trying that headset. And uh, it's really hard to say. Um, I think, uh, yeah, they, they added those extra two cameras on there, and I'll be curious to see if how that uh, impacts the tracking quality. 
I will say I've got this on my head and it is very comfortable. So, I mean, that's a big difference. Uh, they're coming in kind of uh, at the last second here um, over with the Cosmos. All right, what else should we try? Um, let's see. Anon Mason says they returned their Rift S and they're saving it for the Index instead. Mm. What, what was your experience with Rift S? Tell us why you uh, decided that it was needed to be returned. Yeah, Mark Leonard wants to know minimum requirements for the Index. According to Google, um, you need 8 gigs of RAM. You need at least a GTX 970 or AMD RX 480. I would recommend better than that, though. That's we're, we're using what today? 980 um, Ti? Yeah, my, my computer that we're streaming from and playing on today is a 980 Ti uh, with 32 gigs of RAM and uh, an i7. So I think I'm, I'm probably just just a little tiny bit above the minimum requirements for the index i don't have a super high-end computer this is the same computer that i've been using for vr ever since the original vibe came out and the original rift so i haven't upgraded this pc at all in over three years now um so i'm i'm getting near the point where i'm going to need the upgrade um Anon Mason said they couldn't scope rifles well, couldn't use archery correctly, and racking a pistol to the side was difficult. Uh, so just those dead zones that are just outside the range of the Rift S inside-out tracking. So that's understandable. I think if you play a lot of shooters that require those type of movements, it makes sense that you would want something like the Index with uh, better, more consistent quality tracking. If you're playing something where your hands are in front of your face mostly, then it's probably good enough i think rift s is good enough for me i don't play exclusively shooters i don't play them all the time um it's just one of many things that i play um so i i can understand that mindset um let's see here hey bam fam thanks for tuning in we appreciate it thank you so much and uh we hope you're in <coughs> hope you enjoy the streams and <clears throat> for everyone that's watching, if you ordered an index, hopefully you get yours on time. Um, I know they're back ordered right now, so if you weren't in early, then you might have trouble getting one, especially if you order now. Um, let's see. We have another comment here. Uh, Greg says, visually they hate how there's no gloved hands in H3 VR. Uh, the game's great, but neon controller silhouettes um, just doesn't do it for them. Mm. I'd be curious if over time um, the the finger tracking gets better and maybe more developers feel more comfortable with uh, sort of doing more finger representations. Uh, Mr. Epic Me, the Index controllers, formerly known as the Knuckles controllers, they are compatible with any um, Lighthouse tracked headset. So with the Vive, the Index, uh, the Pimax, any headset that uses lighthouse tracking, you can use the index controllers with it. Uh, so it's not just the index. If you already have a Vive, you can just buy the controllers if you want. And those are, I think, 260 for both. And yeah, no problem. Uh, for everyone that's tuning in so far, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Hopefully the streams are valuable and informational for you all. Um, let me know how the audio quality is, if the balance is good between my voice, Ian's voice, and um, the actual game audio. I believe the stream still says David Jagno below the border of where Ian's at because I was streaming yesterday. We forgot to switch the name, but that's okay. Uh, that is actually Ian inside of VR. Hello, I'm Ian sitting is typing. off to the side. Sorry. You can see my hand. I'm going to reach forward a tiny bit here. You can see my hand poking out on the side of the screen in the bottom right. Uh, maybe. I don't know if that came through or not. <coughs> Okay, sounds good. That's good. You can hear the game pretty good too. That we just want to make sure you guys can hear everything. Okay, well, that is really in the dark. And this guy talks very loudly in Arizona sunshine. So I turned it down a little bit. The game audio. That's all good. It seemed like it would be overwhelming. How do you do the flashlight in here? Arcturus said, "Oh no, you have to walk forward to get the flashlight. You don't have it yet." Arcturus said they had a lucid dream last night that, that they have their index already. <laughs> so this was really scary yesterday when I okay, was checking this out, but like, like well, what, did, what were you playing in your dream, Arcturus? Okay, in your dreams where you had your index, what, what was the first thing you played? 
Um, Nico wants to know what is picture quality like in the FOV compared to the original Vive. So I saw a comment asking to do sort of a visual representation of uh, how far. Ooh, let me get these zombies first. Uh, a visual representation of how far the field of view goes. Um, every time I fire the gun, the uh, the window pops out. All right, so um, I've got the headset dialed in pretty far. Uh, so I've got the maximum field of view provided by the lenses. And if I take my hand out here in front and move it to my side, the field of view is about right there. That's the edge of one eye uh, able to see in VR. And just for everyone's reference, if you're watching the stream, you'll see uh, we have a camera above the webcam showing the first person perspective of where his hands are at. Um, so that is actually cropped a little bit. It does go wider than that, but you're seeing a cropped version just so that it you know, looks a good um, aspect ratio for the stream. It was a very wonky shape, so we cropped it some. Um, JR Raiden says, um, I think he, he is most interested in comparisons between the original Vive and the Index. Because that's probably the upgrade path a lot of people are going to make is they didn't get the Pro it's and they're most interested in the Index. Yeah, so it's hard. I would have a hard time saying don't uh, to those people going from original Vive. Like, uh, it just seems night and you day. You would have a hard time saying don't upgrade? Is yeah. That, okay. Uh, it, it seems like... Um, it's one of those things like the only reason not to upgrade is because you're waiting for something better. And I don't so think would you now agree is the that right if money, time to do if that. If money were not an object, is there a better PC VR experience than the Index and the Index controllers? If money is no concern at all. Yeah, I, I would have to say no. I think this is the best. This is the best that it gets right now? I've, I've been playing with Reverb. Um yeah, I, I think this is the best money you can can buy right now. Um, you know, right. but but Pimax, I mean, yeah. I haven't played with it. Uh, I doubt. I, I have a hard time imagining it can match this. Because even well, let's say even if you prefer the Pimax headset, which I would struggle to believe if someone tried the Index, they would prefer the Pimax. Um, you would still, I mean, the Knuckles controllers are still better than the Pimax Sword and Shield controllers. Uh, well, the Sword and Shield seems like a knockoff of the Index controllers, from what I've seen. You and have to, you I, have to be a certain buyer that's interested in PC experimentation. You know, going yeah. into your controller bindings and get, getting your controller bindings right. Like that's a completely different person, I think, than an average Oculus Rift buyer. Hey, Michael. Um, we don't have an office space. We never did. The editorial team has always worked remotely. Um, so we are currently in my office space inside my home. Uh, Ian came over to do the stream. Uh, so we've never actually had an office space. That was always a separate part of the company. Um, MC Schwartz, how much content is available that actually takes advantage of the controllers? Good question. We're trying to compile that list. Uh, more or less the way Valve did this rollout, um, June 28th is more or less, I think, the guidance a lot of devs got for trying to get their uh, updates, their index updates ready. So I, th that stuff is still hitting the Steam store. And uh, we're basically discovering on the fly uh, which apps have that support and how good that support is. Yeah, like, for example, any, any minute now, Blood and Sorcery is supposed to get its index update. Um, and I think over the next week or two, a lot of apps are going to start getting updates with index support. And if you look on the Steam store, you'll see a lot of games already listed as supporting index, but that means the headset. Having specific button mapping and correct support for the index controllers is a different thing. So and um, this interaction <clears throat> is really intuitive and fun and, and empowering. You're in Tilt Brush right I'm now, I'm in right? Tilt Brush here. Okay. And this whole this whole interaction works really really well, but it's not universal. It's not in every app, and obviously, not every app is an art creation app or wants you to resize the world. So uh, 
each developer is going to implement this differently. And, uh, you know, when you ask how much content, if you're going to spend all of your time in tilt brush, that's all that matters is that the tilt brush has this kind of support. So, um, I think one of the most impressive things I did yesterday, the first time I tried the index was yesterday and you can watch that stream on our YouTube channel. We have it archived. Um, I think the most impressive thing I did that really blew me away the most was probably the moon dust tech demo. Mm. Um, just all the different ways that it teaches you about how the index controllers work. Um, get having to learn, you know, retrain my muscle memory to know that instead of releasing a button to throw something like the grip button with my pinky, you just release the controller. You open your palm. That simple action of opening your palm to throw something is it's, it's wild. It's a it totally just, it's completely changes things for me. Well, so as I've, I've talked to some devs, um, there's this feeling like in, in theory, you go into a virtual world like I just did. I activate the world, and then I just stand there, hands hands open. Um, that's a different kind of like mental space to be in than other, than other headset where you've got your your fingers resting on the edges of the controller here, and you're sort of like ready to pull. Uh, you know, I, I've got to like interact with the world around me with the, these triggers. You don't necessarily need that to be your opening uh, stance when entering a virtual world. You can kind of just keep your hands open, look around, and then uh, then start interacting. Then then sort of like make a fist or decide you want to interact, but sort of just letting your hands loose. Uh, is a new experience. So here, let's try this. <coughs> Lip sync on. Yeah, what I compared it to yesterday is I feel like the difference between non-index VR controllers and the index controllers is similar to the difference between standing 180 VR versus room scale VR. I think it's a similar jump because it just, you can't overstate the benefit to immersion you get from having the finger tracking like Ian's showing now, but also the open ha the open palm um, feeling that you get with the index controllers where you have to physically squeeze an object and release it to throw it and let go. It's just, especially doing things in a game that requires throwing objects like a grenade or a, a, a ball or something like that. It's, it's crazy. Um, VR sickness. We have not heard anything about a wireless adapter. Uh, the Vive wireless adapter will not work, um, and um, I don't think TPCast plans on supporting the index. I don't know if any other solutions are coming. I would hope so. The wire is a huge limitation. Um, Arcturus has a random question. Do you think that Oculus will ever get individual trackers like the Vive? I assume he means like the Vive trackers. Like an object? That's, that's already an option in in the system, right? Is a like tracked object is something you can add in somewhere buried in the Oculus uh, system settings. Oh, okay. Um, I definitely, I mean, I, I think the, we've been talking about this internally debating, like they haven't activated the uh, AR features or rather the, the pass through cameras. So uh, what we're doing right now is we were able to access the um, OBS feed or access the camera three camera feed through OBS and cropped just to the left eye. So there's actually the second eye is provided in the same image to OBS. And then uh, we've cropped it just to this left eye. But uh, at the preview event uh, where Valve basically first showed this headset, they did show an AR mode where a person was standing right about here in front of me and they were represented with like color bubbles and various other um, uh, things on their faces, uh, like, sorry, the, the little bubbles would come up and they would change color, change distance. You could lean in, lean out, and uh, more of the surface uh, area would appear around you. Um, I asked whether they would use it in the setup process at all, and uh, they said, uh, I don't think that's planned. I think it's going to be sort of like a developer feature. Um, 
more than anything else. Uh, but we'll see. I, that's supposed to come later this summer. Are the lenses the same as the original Vive? Uh, don't think so. So I wish I could get a, let me get into a gun game in a minute. Um, a game with guns to kind of show the sweet spot of the lenses. Uh, I guess I could do hot dogs again. Um, let's see. So like holding this at this distance with just, just looking at it with my left eye, it's incredibly, um, ooh, performance there. That's very bad. Probably getting like 20 frames a second or something. Oh, it's probably because the screen popped up again. Let me minimize it. Did that help? Not yet. Let me see if there's anything else I need to close. There, that did it. Okay. I'm better. All right, cool. <coughs> yeah, that should be fixed very soon. It looks like the stream dipped as well. I don't know what happened with that. The resolution's all bad. All right, so here's what I want to show uh, as far as clarity resolution. Um, I've got this gun here. Uh, I can move. What? For some reason, the stream, like, tanked in quality. I don't know what happened. Is it coming back or is it still bad? It's super blurry. I don't know. So I'm going to look straight ahead. Hold the gun off to the side here. It's still... I don't know what's going on. Like, I can see a few rings on the lens at the very edge here. But I don't see any rings throughout this entire range until there's a few rings right here. The Fresnel lenses, uh, I can see a few out at the very extreme edges. And uh, other than that, I can take this gun and see with extreme clarity right here the the shine on the back of this gun the the sights um this whole range everything is very uh crisp so um that's from about here with no rings to here and i'm just looking out my left eye i've actually got my right eye closed for this uh to to demonstrate this or talk about but if i uh <clears throat> so the uh, trigger of the index controller do you think it i mean have you ever shot a real gun uh been a while yeah i have Do, I, does that trigger feel feel good in your hand i think to me i love the touch controllers but i do think the vive wands have the best trigger in terms of feeling good to pull the trigger do you, do you think the index controllers have a good trigger? I, I, this feels nice. I, 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 I it's hard for me to imagine a better demonstration for people on the stream than showing uh, the actual trigger depressing here until the oh, so, oh, wow. I didn't realize you can actually see it move as you... Yeah. So, I mean... I, Looks pretty nice. Feels great is, is all I can say. Not bad. And yeah, the the it's hard to kind of describe how nice that feels to release for the first time uh, and then grab again. So yeah, that's a that's another. This is uh, a specific interaction tuned for uh, hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. But the left side of this little pad here activates the uh, releases the thing, and then you can flip it up. Yeah. So talking about jitter, um, for me, what I've noticed in VR is that 
you don't notice that your hands aren't perfectly still in real life. They're just not. That's just most people can't hold their hand perfectly still. Um, so whenever you watch it in in on in gameplay, like you watch someone's hand and you watch a floating controller or an object, it looks jittery and it looks like it's moving. But when you're in VR, you don't perceive that little jitter because it's just how your hands are. It, it's hard to describe, but if if you play in VR very much and you look at your hands, you'll probably notice a little bit of movement. But when you're in VR, you I don't really perceive it. I think the really window is doing my performance much. thing again. Oh, it slowed down. Yeah, I think it's just because it keeps popping the game window on top, so I have to minimize it. That's better. Oh, look at that. Blade and Sorcery update just came. I'm downloading it now. It's I wanted a, to show... It's a gig. I wanted to show Longbow here, uh, back to that question of, like, whether to get this headset or another headset or, or why to upgrade from Vive to, to this. Um... We've been trying to do as many tracking tests as we can here, uh, comparing uh, reverbs, two camera uh, tracking to riffs, five camera tracking to the outside in systems. Uh, it is not easy to compare fairly um, because like, there's the question of just what's a normal action in a game like, and can devs design around that specific interaction to account for uh, occasional tracking loss. Interesting. That one requires both. Well, let me open up the window. That'll help with the light so that the first person view is brighter. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. You can see your hands much better now. That looks perfect. Just don't look outside the window. I don't want people to see how dead my grass is. <laughs> I don't know if I could pick these things up because I think the floor is at the wrong uh, height so right now. So Arcturus, what we talked about yesterday in, in regards to the screen door effect is um, we don't think that's a really a good term anymore. I think that term's a bit outdated. So, And uh, the reason for that is um, it's almost n not noticeable. I mean, the, the quality... And the resolution is so crisp that you don't see a screen door effect in, in the way that you did on the DK1, DK2, or even the original Rift and Vive. It's, I mean, if you really look for it, you can see like you can see some pixels a tiny bit, but uh, someone someone just bought an index based on that alone. Yeah, probably. I mean, th that's really the best way to describe it. Is that I don't think screen door effect is a good term anymore. I, I don't. I think all modern headsets. I think the index. I think. Even the Rift S, I think, has a good enough resolution. You don't notice it as much. I think the Quest has a good resolution. Um, you can see it a little bit in, in these headsets, but um, especially the Index in particular, it's it's so sharp, and the field of view is, is so wide, and, and the lenses look great. It's it's a really, really good experience. Like Ian said, um, if for, our, for our assessment, we don't think there's a better consumer-focused PC VR experience in the Index with the Index controllers. I think that's as good as it gets right now. So uh, one thing I want to note, note or sort of grabbing is different app to app, right? Um, yeah, it seems like it. Some of them you have to hold, the you have to squeeze and hold. And the tri some, some require the trigger to be held and some don't. Yeah, which I think if, if an app is using the trigger on the Index controller to hold something, then it's not updated. That that is clearly not the intended way to make someone grab something with the index. So this is the example I want to use for um, sort of why you might want to go inside out, or sorry, outside in versus inside out. Uh, looking behind you or taking this arrow and lighting it behind you without looking at it is something that's very hard to do with an inside out system. It's very uncommon you don't do that frequently but wouldn't you want that to work when you try to do it mm, yeah that, that's kind of the way people have to think about it so I, I'm not looking at it and I just lit this yeah Arcturus uh, we are extremely excited for Boneworks I think most people consider that one of the top most anticipated VR games coming out um, soon and 
it was on our E3 VR showcase that we had some new gameplay, and we've we've played it a couple times. Ian tried it on the Index. Andy tried it on Touch. Um, just the physics in that experience are are incredible. They've done some amazing work at Stress Level Zero, and I'm really excited to see what the full game is like, if there is even a full game, and ideally, hopefully, what they've learned and what they've done can be applied to other developers, and they can take notes and learn from that as well, because if more games could use Boneworks as, pardon the pun, but the bones of their game, I think that's going to make VR as a whole much better, because that sort of interaction is exactly what VR needs. Um, Chris wants to know, what do you think of the haptic feedback? Is it better or worse than the Vive Wands and Touch? Mm. I, uh, <coughs> I really enjoy the haptics. I love them. I, hard to say better or worse, depending game to game. Um, it's like this, for example, uh, it's pretty and tuned in. If you can, in. Ian, try to lift your hands up a little higher. So this, I still feel that nice, satisfying bowstring as I'm doing this. Uh, it would be hard for me to say whether five wands or that is better. They're both pretty close. Uh, I don't want to say, I, <coughs> maybe I get fatigued. Maybe my, you, what I've noticed is because of the gripping sensation more often, I think I might hold it tighter. Like, you know, when you hold the uh, Oculus Touch the new Oculus Touch controllers and Beat Saber are too hard. You can slide off the battery covers. Um, with these, boy, you can really squeeze tight. And uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm tempted to hold that grip tighter when I get into more active situations. So here's... Uh, Chad Baca wants us to try Revive, but we don't have that installed. I should have installed that last night or this morning, but I didn't. Um, it would probably take a while to get us that all fully set up. We don't have that installed right now. So like, um, But trying out Revive is something that we plan to do with Index um, very soon. Um, specifically, Lone Echo, like you mentioned. We would love to try that at Echo Arena, Echo Combat. Um, Adam wants to know how hand comfort is for short sessions versus longer sessions. That's where that's where I'm kind of going with the the grip. It's hard for me to say whether the the pinch here is more fatiguing or yeah. if it's my grip that's that I'm tiring myself out more because I'm gripping it harder or doing more with my hands uh, rather than just using my trigger finger to do everything. Um, so. It, Yes, I get. I, I've noticed my hands getting tired or or a little bit sore. Like I, I notice there's a little bit of uh, they're being used more uh, in different ways when these things are strapped on. But like this this situation where I'm, I guess I only have to. I, I by habit I always do the trigger on this, but I don't have to. It's just the trigger here, the single trigger here to uh, get a new arrow going. All right, what else? Uh, Lodge and Mac, I think you should be okay um, on your space. Um, one, one and a half meters by three meters, I think that should be fine. Um, as you can see, my office is not very large for VR. Should I go into Beat Saber? Um, or not, because it's too loud. Yeah, Beat Saber is pretty loud, and that doesn't, there's no real index controller tracking to uh -huh. show off in that um blade and sorcery is updated so whenever you're ready we can switch and i'll do that i'm i'm not allowed excited. to Missing oh, you can if you want it's just i have no idea what i'm doing so you should you, i mean you can no. you can go for it no you got uh uh bam fam wants to see onward you can just go to the shooting range if you want or do some solo against ai sure uh uh, we did Onward quite a bit yesterday at the end of the stream, um, so if you want to check that out. Uh, Fetchukua Obimdiki, I'm so sorry. Wait, That's let me do move, move probably butchered your name. Um, the headset itself is about 500. Um, you need base stations in the corners of your room to right track there. it, though. You have to set up sensors. Right there. Um, those um, with the headset and the controllers all together is $1,000. Um, if you already have a Vive and you already have base stations, you can just get the controllers for 260 if you want. I 
Um, let's see here. Cami wants to know if the FOV feels noticeably better than Vive. I would say yes, yeah. undoubtedly. You can adjust it, though. That's the thing. The FOV is adjustable. There's a little knob on the side of the index headset. You can twist it to make the lenses go in and out so to increase or decrease your FOV. This is a, the, this dial right here on the top of the headset, um, all the way out, this is where my field of view ends. And that's where my field of view ends. That I can't see any more out of one eye. If I adjust this dial all the way to the back, now I've got to out here, like that's where the edge that the the edge of the controller is visible. The left side of it is visible over here, and then all the way over here. So just adjusting this dial uh, right here dramatically changes the field of view. Uh, Fetchikua, uh, we are not the creators of the index. We don't ship it anywhere. Um, I don't know if it goes to Nigeria. You'd have to check on that. Let me try Steam. Let me try this. Whoops. And so the adjustments on the hand controller. I did just answer your it. question. You might have to wait for the delay to catch up. For some reason, Oculus Home just opened. What did you do, Ian? Super hot. Super hot tried to open that, maybe. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, show everyone how you can move your fingers to move time. Yeah, let's let's see it's how that works. It's pretty crazy. Nolan, I don't know if it ships to Antarctica. I'm assu I I have no idea. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, let us know. If you have any uh, games you want to see in particular, we'll try to play them. And um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button um, so you can Whoa. be notified and check out our content in the future going forward. And also check out UploadVR.com for all of the latest VR news, uh, VR reviews, uh, videos, and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, Phantom, that is correct. If you want, Ian, you don't have to dodge all the bullets. You can block them with uh, the gun, or you can cut them with a the knife. You can do lots of cool stuff. The release, so we, we had this talk yesterday where you, you would prefer to have the wireless freedom to Yeah, I think if, if I'm comparing um, Superhot on Index versus on Quest, I personally prefer it on Quest because it visually looks about the same. And having full 360 wireless in any room I want is makes this game so much better to me. Being able to move around more makes a huge difference. And uh, I already tried your full name. I don't know if I said it correctly. Uh, Fechakua Obendiki. I don't know. Maybe that's correct. Um, Rudy Zavindo. We don't have Elite Dangerous installed at the moment. And it has been so long that I don't actually remember how to play that game to be honest with you i that's not a game we're going to play right now i'll try to get back into it and hopefully record some footage and i can post a video that makes it look like Those i know what i'm doing but uh, we're, we're sorry but we're not going to play elite dangerous right now that game's a little over our head because it's been so long i haven't played it in years those literally. sim players are a, a different category that that need to be they need to think about their <laughs> purchasing decisions a little bit differently than the rest of the people that are playing just sort of a wide variety of things if you're looking for like a large amount of time in a sim racer or a space space sim uh your buying decisions are going to be a little bit different like reverb makes more sense in that sort of situation uh where you're not going to be moving around the room you're just going to be sitting in a cockpit phantom viper says you just read to quit yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, what should I try now? I'll do one more, and then you can do Blade and Sorcery? Sure. All right, let's try. Let's see if I can figure it onward. Let's see. Someone wants to know if we could try 11 table tennis. 
or Ultra Wings. Does Ultra Wings have index finger support? I can install both of those right now. And uh, let me let me check. Sorry, you're gonna have to look at my face here in the way. Hopefully, Ian doesn't attack me. I'll like, do my throwing test. Yeah, yesterday we did a test on stream where um, I tried to throw the controller as hard as I could, and it didn't actually come out of my hands. So we don't have the lanyards. Issue. Yeah, I was I was a little terrified because I didn't have the the wrist straps, but. Uh, it's, it seems like we did okay. Okay, 11 is downloading. And what was the other one someone said? Ultra Wings. Let me get Ultra Wings as well. Uh, Phantom, we have not checked out VRChat yet. You can try that if you want, Ian. Yeah, I, don't, okay. I don't know if it has finger tracking or not. It was in a beta branch, I thought. Uh, I don't think I have that one installed. Okay, Ultra Wings and 11 Table Tennis are both installing now. Choose, do you want Onward or VRChat? Oh man. I think Onward and VRChat are both opening. Oh yeah, let me close Onward. I'll close it for you. Yeah, I hear Onward, the uh, <laughs> sound effects for it. That's the first thing. There you go. There's VR chat. I think that's the first thing most people will notice about the headset, the sound. Okay, it shouldn't take too long. Ultra Wings and Eleven are both installing. It looks like they're going pretty quick. I am going into VR chat though. That's going to use the web. Uh, let's see here. Tio wants to know, can you detach the the speakers, the earphones? I haven't tried. I believe so. And I think all of Steam is like frozen right now because we're we tried to do too many things at once. What happens if I click that? I don't think we have any racing games installed at the moment at the moment. Should we restart Steam? I think we might need to restart Steam. Hang on. I, ki uh, I killed it. This will need to be our back menu. Uh, I mean, like virtual desktop type stuff, uh, or I think they mean like live event type stuff. Uh, next VR. Uh, I need to go see. They recently posted some um. Rec recently posted some NHL footage, I believe. But uh, there hasn't been a ton of live 360 footage, and uh, next VR recently had some layoffs, so they're a smaller company than they were. So I don't know how uh, frequent their content production is these days. Yeah, we um, we are currently on a 980 Ti is what we are using at the moment. And we have the headset running at 80 hertz Man. for performance reasons. Steam is messing up again. It keeps trying to install Steam VR Workshop content and it's like won't let me do anything else. I'm going to have to restart Steam again. Yeah, we have Poker Stars installed. Um, that's one that we can check out.
Uh, Arcturus, I did time you out for asking about porn nonstop. You're correct. We're not going to talk about porn on the stream. Sorry, dude. All right, so CMVR is restarting. Uh, come on. Okay, I think that's done now. Is it inside the headset now for you? Uh, I've got the home space. Or, I mean, I've got the empty home space. Is it letting you start anything? Uh, no. Wait, there it is. It says SteamVR is not responding. Let me unplug the whole headset again. I don't think it has anything to do with the headset. It's Steam itself is being stupid. Um, Alexander wants to know your impressions of the quality of the display. Uh, no one can hear you. Hold on. When you unplugged everything, it must have reset something. Is, did you plug it back in? Yeah. It's not picking up the... Why is it not on there? I don't know. It's not picking up that, that microphone at all. Say something now. Can you hear me? My microphone? Yeah, that should that that's better. There you go. I see the home space. I have the Steam startup. That's new. Are there tracking diodes on the head strap as well as the front? Is what Greg wants to know. Good question. Um, I've noticed sort of placing the headset down facing away from two lighthouses. It uh has some trouble picking up the headset. Uh, I do not know whether there's diodes on the back or not. Um, just that sometimes the headset loses either one or both of the base stations when it's really faced away in a sort of a seated situation where you're just setting up the headset on a yeah, table. Yeah, it seems like not working. It broke steam. I don't know what happened. It refuses to function. <coughs> Steam VR is working, but Steam itself is not. Uh, back to the question of visual quality. Um, the quality of dark areas uh, is limited, I guess. Um, I don't spend a ton of time in darkness in, in, in enclosed spaces but if you're a horror game lover and, and plan to spend a lot of time in a game with dark spaces you might want to get a hands on with index to really get a feel for how that uh, how the so dark black levels of an LCD will I think what we're going to have to do that. is um, maybe I'll just restart my computer and we'll restart the stream um, because I, d I don't see any other option at the moment. None of this is working. So we'll see. It didn't do this yesterday, but SteamVR is known to uh, be entirely problematic. All right, so we'll be back. I'm going to restart my computer and we'll restart the stream. Um, you should, it'll be a different URL, so it won't be the same URL here. 
Um, so you'll have to just go to our channel and find it, or um, we'll, we'll post another link on Twitter and in the article. Uh, so we'll be right back. Thanks, everyone, uh, for your patience, and we'll be back soon.